All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. As always, thank you for taking time out to watch the video. I really appreciate it. We have more PlayStation news, rumors, and leaks to go over and discuss today. So before we dive into these topics, do me a big favor. If you do end up enjoying the video or finding it informative, make sure you leave it a like. It really helps the videos out more than you know. And if you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. The first topic we're talking about has to do with the BAFTAs because Sony was there in a big way, specifically Housemark and even Insomniac Games. They won quite a few awards and Returnal actually took home the biggest award from the BAFTA, the biggest award you can get from this. And it's pretty significant. I wanted to be sure to let you guys know about this because I think it's a pretty big achievement for Housemark. I mean, it's a big achievement for any studio, but I think it kind of becomes clear why Sony was so eager to try to bring on Housemark as a first party studio. So this is reading from Push Square where they say, we couldn't help feeling that Housemark got robbed a little bit at the Game Awards last year. So it's good to see the Finnish studio finally receive the recognition it deserves at the BAFTAs. At a glitzy event in London overnight, the freshly minted PlayStation studio took home the gongs for audio achievement, best music, best performer in a leading role, and crucially, best game. And obviously this was a huge milestone moment for Housemark, and we actually have a quote here from the studio's founder who said, we took a leap of faith and had to build our wings while falling, but everyone from the team that has made such an incredible effort and the end result far surpasses even our wildest expectations. So yeah, you know, big congratulations to Housemark. I imagine that they are elated right now as they should be. And as I said, it just makes it that much more clear why Sony decided to pursue them and bring them on as a first party studio. And it's worth noting that what they did with Returnal was before they were even fully underneath Sony. And I think that's very impressive. But the article continues by saying, all in all, it was another big night for PlayStation with Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart also taking home two awards, technical achievement and animation, taking Sony's total on the night up to six. It's a reminder that for all of the Japanese giants flaws, it's still pumping out many of the best games on the market on a regular basis. And I'm glad that Push Square points that out because I feel like that is something that is pretty important to pay attention to. I think that everybody realizes Sony is not perfect, but I think this just once again reveals what makes PlayStation so great in the eyes of many fans, and that is that the priority truly is about quality video games, about quality development, and this is what PlayStation Studios is about. I know some people maybe roll their eyes and don't believe that, and they think it's all talk, but I assure you, it's not all talk and you can see it at moments like this where there's a difference between talking and actually you know walking i guess as the old saying goes and so yeah i think that uh house mark again you know congratulations to them i loved returnal it was my personal game of the year of 2021 and it is really nice to finally see them getting the significant recognition that i believe they deserve and you know shout out to ratchet and clank worth the part as well but we're moving on to the next topic which talks about a potential leak regarding guerrilla games and i think many of you who are hoping for socom to return I don't want to say that you will necessarily be excited about this, but it does at least whittle it down a little bit further. We've been talking for quite some time about how Guerrilla Games has a second AAA development team that has been working on some type of exclusive game for PlayStation for about three years. I think it's actually more than three years now, and it's been rumored to maybe be so calm. If not so calm, a lot of fans are thinking, well, maybe it'll be another kill zone. We've also heard that it could be something outside of that. And so we are once again looking at the leaker who goes by the name that I frankly can't stand, that being Oops Leaks. Now again, I have to warn you, I do not know if this individual is a reliable leaker. It remains to be seen, but until you know they are proven to be unreliable, it's gonna take some time. I will continue to just convey to you guys and let you guys know what is being said here. And so he gave us an update on Naughty Dog, he gave us an update on Ben Studio, and now he's giving us an update on Guerrilla Games where he says multiplayer shooter competitive hero shooter and he puts you know hero shooter with a question mark that sounds concerning to me if that's actually what they're doing here uh but it says competitive hero shooter with an esports focus 
Now, the esports focus does make sense. Three years in development, Rainbow Six leads involved. Again, this is something we talked about. He's he's not really revealing anything that you could say is like a leak here. We've already talked about this. We know that there are lead developers at the studio who worked on Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, here is where his sources differ. One claims that it's a new SOCOM game. The other says that it's set in the Horizon universe. Soon we'll find out what's true. And then he says at the bottom here, Killzone, it's dead. And that's what I thought was important to highlight here is if what he's saying is true, it seems to rule out the idea that Killzone is returning. And honestly, that makes sense to me. I did not expect Sony to return with Killzone. I know that there are going to be a lot of Killzone fans who are extremely disappointed to hear that if it does, again, turn out to be true. But this is where it's a bit confusing to me because he's saying that one of his sources is telling him it's a SOCOM game, yet the other is saying it's a a game set in the horizon universe now there could be some mix up here for sure uh he goes on to say the future of horizon he says horizon will be a trilogy and its universe is already expanding with a vr spinoff uh, online standalone game or expansion is planned probably something close to monster hunter world sony considers horizon one of the main playstation franchises at the moment and so this is where i kind of want to give my thoughts on this and i want to say that i really sincerely hope that this team that is led by the rainbow six siege developers i hope they are not working on something horizon related because i don't want to see oversaturation here i believe when you have a studio as big as guerrilla games i mean they just put out horizon forbidden west we know we're getting horizon vr with call of the mountain and i think it's more than possible for the main horizon development team to work on a uh, standalone expansion of some kind similar to what we saw with ghost of tsushima with legends but for horizon i really hope that this team that's working on a multiplayer shooter i hope it's so calm now what's really fascinating to me is it seems like it's almost implied with the way this tweet is worded that if this team that is working on a multiplayer shooter if this does turn out to be a game set in the horizon universe we could see a first person shooter set in the horizon universe that sounds very strange to me i don't even think that sounds uh realistic at all like i do not think that that's what they're working on that would be truly baffling to me certainly would be interested to see how that would look but i that just doesn't make sense to me i think that this second team at Gorilla Games, I think they're working on SOCOM. I mean, he says he has multiple sources. One of them says it's SOCOM. We've been hearing this for a while. We still don't have any tangible evidence, but believe me when I tell you, there are a lot of PlayStation fans, and I, I have seen them. Believe me, I've seen them. There are a lot of PlayStation fans who would just be elated. I think it's the second time I'm using that word in this video, but they would be through the roof excited if SOCOM made its return. So... I'm hoping that that's what this is, um, but yeah, again, we have to take this with a grain of salt. You guys make of it what you will and let me know, would you like to see the return of SOCOM? I will be interested to see what you guys have to say. Now we are moving on to the final topic here, which is one that I have to say is quite depressing if it's true. It's still within rumor territory, so we do have to take it with a grain of salt, but I really have to ask, did xbox actually do this to sony because if they did man i have to imagine it's probably hurting sony pretty badly currently so i have an article coming from purexbox.com where it says rumor microsoft paid for chip priority to increase xbox series x and series s stock they say we've been seeing stock for the Xbox Series S and particularly Xbox Series X consoles to continue to become more plentiful over the past six months or so, mostly at the back end of 2021. And it seems there's a good reason for that. According to the folks over at the Xbox Era podcast, Microsoft actually did a deal to get chip priority for the Xbox Series X and S last year, which resulted in the greater availability of consoles, especially in the UK, 
closer to Christmas time. Around April last year, I got a DM saying Microsoft's going to have a lot of consoles available this fall, and they did in the end, didn't they? Microsoft paid for chip priority at the factories, which is why we saw so much more and are still seeing so much more Xbox stock now. To me, it's a smart investment. Late last year, Microsoft successfully launched Halo Infinite and the special edition Xbox Series X, and the stock increase of the standard version led to record UK sales in December, surpassing even the launch month in terms of units sold. Meanwhile, even recently, the Xbox Series consoles were the top selling consoles in the UK in March 2022, with the Nintendo Switch and PS5 both falling behind. If the rumor is true, it seems like this strategy is paying off for Microsoft. And so so yeah, this is why I'm posing the question, is Microsoft the reason why there is such a, and I have to emphasize the word severe PS5 shortage because uh, quite a few Xbox fans have been, you know, letting me know, hey man, the Xbox series has been outselling the PS5 for a couple months now. What's going on? And I understand that Xbox enthusiasts, people who are excited about the Xbox brand, they're going to want to believe because so it's because suddenly people are more interested in the Xbox console than the PS5 console. But I think even they realize that's not what's going on here. Clearly, there is something more going on. That's not to say that people aren't interested in the Xbox. They absolutely are. That's also not to say that the Xbox isn't doing well in its own right sales wise. It absolutely is. And I'm happy because of that. I want to see consoles sell more. You know, I think it's good for the console market. But what's odd to me is that the PS5 is seemingly coming in last place for like the past couple of months. And it has become pretty apparent that Sony is seriously struggling to be able to secure enough PS5 units. And it seems to really be hurting them. And to me, even though this is a rumor, this makes total sense. This would actually perfectly explain why, while we're still seeing a chip shortage, Microsoft is seemingly able to just pump out more and more Xboxes and have them available for people to pick up pretty much on demand to where when it comes to the PS5, it seems like people are still raging at the fact that it, it it's extremely difficult to even find one anywhere. And it seems like, you know, it's just not getting any better. And if this is really what Microsoft did, I don't blame them. I mean, it is a smart strategy. It was a strategic move. And, you know, some people maybe aren't going to be happy to hear about this. Like if you're somebody who does want a PS5 and you've been waiting and you're hearing that, well, part of the reason why PS5s are practically non-existent right now is because Microsoft paid extra to you know make sure more xboxes were created instead and get that chip priority yeah that that's frustrating but you can't really blame microsoft and it makes me wonder why didn't sony do the same thing is this like a bidding thing did did sony try to do this but then microsoft simply was willing to pay more money more so than maybe sony was willing to or able to i don't know you know this is that kind of inside stuff that we really are not privy to but we're hearing through the rumor mill that this is what happened. And so it's quite unfortunate. It is quite unfortunate. You know, I, I do wonder when exactly the chip shortage is going to end. And I just can't help but wonder if, you know, everything that's been going on, is it ultimately going to negatively impact PlayStation 5 sales? Because the PlayStation 5 was off to a spectacular start. It looked like it was on track to break all sorts of records. And then it just hit an unavoidable brick wall with the chip shortage and there's nothing that sony or anybody else could have done about it it's not their fault you do gotta wonder you know how is this going to impact the overall life cycle of the ps5 when it's all said and done but yeah i'll leave it there guys you make of it what you will i will certainly be interested to see what you have to say that's going to do it for the video though i hope you did enjoy it i hope you did find it informative leave it a like if you did subscribe if you're new hit the bell notification icon and feel free to share this video out on top of all that but until next time guys take care